be strong. Hey guys, welcome to my second video. If you didn't happen to catch the first one, it was a prelude to the bridged ACL repair surgery that I had a month ago. I wanted to use these videos to chronicle my progress and hopefully provide some more information on this relatively uncommon surgery for those who've had an ACL injury and aren't aware there are other options, you know, other than the typical reconstructions that you can get. So uh, I had a bridged ACL repair, which is similar to the bare repair um, that is going through clinical trials right now. And what it basically is, is instead of taking out the remnants of the old ACL and then harvesting a graft from either a different part of your body or from a, a cadaver, you the or the surgeon you know instead takes the um the remnants of your acl um and stitches them back together basically um that's why it's called bridge because there's usually some kind of like bridge or scaffold um that's used to attach the pieces so that a clot can form around it and that's really why most acls don't repair themselves without surgery it's because um, you know, due to the mechanics of the knee and all of the movement and the lack of, lack of vascularity, um, it's difficult for a clot to form around the remnants of the ACL and therefore difficult for like all of the healing factors and everything to clot around it and to really repair that tissue. And so they put a scaffold around it, um, you know, in my case they used a polyethylene um, like scaffold. Um, but a number of different surgeons around the country, and I guess around the world now, um, actually use different things, including Kevlar. There's the uh, what the Bear Trial is using, which is a biodegradable mesh made from bovine collagen, um, and a couple other ones. But really, um, you know, why I want to make these videos and kind of get this out there is that these um, repair surgeries have a lot of benefits over the traditional ACL surgery. And what I mean by that is the traditional ACL surgery is very good for getting you a strong ACL quickly, but at a cost. And that cost is they have to drill into your bone, both your tibia and your fibula, to anchor the new ACL. And then like because they can't quite insert it perfectly at the same angle as the original ACL, there's always going to be a little bit of friction. Basically, you know, your knee just doesn't um, sit or move exactly the same, even if like the insertion angle is like half a degree off, like over 10, 15, 20 years, it's going to cause a lot of friction. It's going to wear down the meniscus. It's going to wear down the, uh, you know, the surface of, you know, the two bones in your knee and it's going to lead to osteoarthritis. And that's why the majority of people who get a typical reconstruction have osteoarthritis. It's because that insertion angle is just a little bit off. Um, and really, you know, the better surgeon you get, like the closer the insertion angle you tend to end up with. And so the rates of osteoarthritis decrease or the time scale for when you develop it will lengthen. But with the repair surgery, you're actually taking the native ACL and you're stitching it back together and anchoring it there. And so the insertion angle is the same. And so the people who've gotten the surgery, who've had it done successfully, have much lower rates of osteoarthritis being like in the 20 to 30 percentile range. Whereas with a reconstruction, you know, you're looking at maybe 70 plus percent at the 10 year mark. And like, you know, I got the surgery at 34. I really don't want to have to start looking at knee replacement at 44, right? Like knee replacement is a huge deal. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the surgeries of knee replacements, but it's gross. They take out saws, they chop parts of your bone off, and they replace it with like, you know, metal. So totally wanted to avoid that. Um, so that's why I went with the repair. I wanted to have the highest quality of life and not the quickest return to sport. And so, you know, I did this, we took it a little easier with the early phases of PT. Um, right now I'm at the three month mark and things are going great. Um, both the surgeon and my physical therapist have tested it multiple times. Um, you know, they've done all of the typical 
uh, ligament testing, you know, Lockman test and, and pivot shift test and all of that. And everything's great. Everything has a firm endpoint. And it's looking really good. Um, my recovery rate is right on track. Again, I haven't been pushing it, but I have been doing um, daily exercises, both stretching and um, to put strain on the ACL. And it's really important that you put strain on the ACL because the ACL heals and strengthens in accordance to the amount of strain that you put on it. Um, obviously, you don't want to strain it too much, so you want to do like progressive loading, which is what you know PT is kind of there for, right? Like they have a better sense than you do of like what the ACL can handle, like right after surgery, and then you know what it can handle at you know one month and two months and three months, and they have like this um, progressive program that they use to really get people back up to sport shape. And I should probably mention the other part of the uh, the surgery that's a little atypical. Um, is I had stem cell adjunct therapy. And, you know, after I had this ACL injury, I'd been looking in like all of the different kinds of options that I had. And, you know, I found the, the bridge repair and I found the bear trial. I tried to get in the bear trial, it didn't work because um, they had, you know, run out of the, the collagen scaffolding. So I started looking at, you know, alternatives that were still repairs and I found, you know, the surgeon that I was gonna use. Um, but there's also stem cell therapy and there's a lot of different stem cell clinics that make a whole bunch of promises that aren't really backed by science yet. And really, if you think about the mechanics of it, it's not that likely to repair a torn ACL just because, you know, if they inject stem cells directly into a, you know, non-bridged ACL, it's likely to wash away, you know, the stem cells just like it would wash away you know, any of the other repair factors that might naturally get in there and help to repair um, the ligament. So um, I was still really curious about it. And there there are a lot of um, anecdotal or like, you know, N of one type reports on this. Um, and then some building uh, evidence with like the Regenix, um, you know, kind of patient library that they uh, keep on their site. So it was looking promising and um, the surgeon that I chose, he had already been doing um, stem cell adjunct therapies for a variety of other um, osteo surgeries. And so I decided to, to go for that as well and get uh, an adjunct stem cell therapy, um, which basically means that they took a corkscrew and they drilled it into my iliac crest in my hip and pulled out a bunch of stem cells, which they centrifuge. And while I was under, while they were doing the actual surgery, after the bundling of the ACL was done, you know, the very last thing that they did was get that um, injection of stem cells and come in and inject it um, both in the meniscus that I had, that, uh, that I had a slight tear in. Um, I had a ramp lesion, which is like right around the edge of the cup. Um, and then also into the bundle of the ACL itself. So like into where they um, had the polyethylene um, scaffold. So luckily, or like, he sent me the videos um, so I could actually see what was done. And it looked like the majority of the stem cells, um, you know, stayed in the bundle or around that area, right? Um, in one of the videos, it looked like some of them were getting washed away by the, uh, the fluid that they inject for visualization for the surgery itself. Um, but in the last video, uh, I think they turned that off um, and could still visualize it. And then he injected, um, you know, the remainder of the stem cells and it looked like they all um, went into the bundle in that area. So uh, he said it was successful. All of the tests from both the surgeon and the PT afterwards have been great. My knee has been feeling great, um, very strong, stronger than, you know, sometimes... I would potentially be comfortable pushing it. Um, you know, like they push it pretty hard in PT sometimes and like I'm surprised that it holds up as well as it does. Um, it still, you know, feels kind of odd at three months. Sometimes it's stiffer than normal. Sometimes there's a, um, you know, it catches or like I can feel the adhesions from the surgery, um, you know, tugging in weird ways while I move my knee. And in the morning I have uh, a little popping until I do like my cycling or, or walk around enough that, you know, some of those air bubbles come out and have like a real discernible pop. Um, but other than that, there's no issues. Um, there's, you know, no pain. Like I can walk, 
I do like two mile walks now. I do five to eight miles on the cycle. Um, I do squats past parallel. And, you know, I do a variety of other exercises with little to no difficulty or even notice that my knee is an issue. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we're going to be doing at six months, we're going to be doing an MRI um, so that the surgeon um, that, you know, I'm working with, he this is actually like the most advanced version of this surgery that he's done. So he's actually going to include it in some of the, the studies or some of the medical classes that he teaches and also in some of the uh, books like the medical textbooks that he writes. So we're going to be doing an MRI at six months and seeing how everything looks like on a scan. Um, if there's, you know, radiographic evidence that the ligament itself is repaired. Um, and, you know, that's going to be included in, in all of that write-up and it will give me, you know, visual confirmation that, you know, I made a, a really good choice and it's not just the, uh, um, the bridge that's holding the ligament together, right? Because, like, that's what I was a little nervous about. Um, you know, obviously a concern with this kind of surgery is it has a higher rate of re-tear than a you know like a double bundled hamstring reconstruction which is like what you know one of the de facto reconstructions um that are used are and the reason being is the double bundled hamstring is actually like stronger especially right after surgery than a repair would be and the repair is really only as strong as that um the scaffolding is right so it really depends on like the skill of the surgeon and like um you know what kind of scaffolding they use as to like how strong the ligament's actually going to be after and so the risk of re-tear can be dramatically higher in people that get a repair over a reconstruction the risk of re-tear for like a double bundled hamstring reconstruction from a really good surgeon and for people that are not um you know children or teens who have a you know much higher risk of of re-tear um is actually really low. It's like maybe 3%. Whereas the risk of retear with um, a repair is about 10% for a non mid substance tear, like where the ACL is not torn down the middle. And for people with a mid substance tear, like myself, whose ACL is torn down the middle, the risk of retear is between like. Uh, 10 and 40 percent so it's only the surgery is only successful in like 60 to 90 percent of the cases though that has been going down dramatically with the um the use of the bridging right like the bridging you know started being used as a way to mitigate that risk and it seems to be very successful um the surgeon that i chose after interviewing a whole bunch of like really um nationally and world-renowned surgeons um he was successful 22 out of 25 times and the three that were not successful were the only three that he's done without the bridging so i was like very confident because he's you know basically 22 for 22 with his bridging technique that continues to get refined and like you know this is the most advanced version it has stem cell adjunct and all this stuff so i was pretty pretty confident with all of those stats that you know it's going to be a good outcome and it seems to be a good outcome so we're going to get the radiographic evidence from the MRI um, in three more months. I'll obviously make another video after that um, because I'm really excited about this. And, you know, really the reason why I'm making these videos is to get out information on this bridged repair. Because when I was doing the initial research, there was not a lot of information on it. Like I had to scour the internet and read hundreds, well, maybe about a hundred uh, clinical trials and other, um, you know, medical texts on, you know, the recovery and how successful like each of these different um, surgeries were. And it took a while to even find anything that mentioned a repair and not a reconstruction. So I think the repair is a really good option, especially for people who aren't trying to get back to sports immediately. Like if you are a high school or college sports like player, athlete, and you know, you're planning on going pro or, or you know, continuing to be an avid athlete, 
you know, as soon as possible, then there's probably not the right one for you, right? You know, you are going to burn bright and, you know, osteoarthritis in 10 to 15 years might not scare you because that might be the end of your professional career. And so, you know, you really want to make the most of your professional career. And so, you know, a reconstruction is probably the better option for you. But if you want to have the highest quality of life for the longest period possible, you want to avoid getting, you know, a full knee replacement, which is, you know, crazy, um, then you might look at, at doing a repair. Like, especially if you're a little older, like you're in your 30s, you're in your 40s, the rates of success are much higher. Basically, um, you know, every decade to two decades um, beyond your teenage years that you are, um, you know, cuts the risk of retear in half. And that's because, you know, older people have better connection to their body, they're less impetuous, they don't have as many, you know, high energy activities that they do. And so the risk of retear is like much lower. So um, there's a lot of factors in thinking about, you know, what you should do, you know, repair, reconstruction, whatever. Definitely work with your surgeon. Um, you know, as I believe and, and act myself, like you are always going to be your best advocate. Um, that's something that I firmly believe and would strongly suggest to anyone that asks is that if you don't take your health seriously enough to like do the research, like, I mean, there, there's always going to be things that can happen. You know, your surgeon is just a person, right? The doctors that you see are just people. They have their own stuff going on. They're professionals and, you know, so they're going to give you advice, but they might not fully understand, you know, the whole um the whole picture about your life right um so it's always best for you to take responsibility for it you know even if it's really difficult even if you have to put in the time and it, you know your time is hard to come by to look into what your options are before you go and talk to a surgeon before you go and talk to you know your osteo whatever um, to really kind of figure out what you think you should do and then you can bounce some ideas off the, uh, the doctors and really come to like what solution um, you know might be best for you. But I'm a big fan of the surgery. Um, it went great. The recovery period was not that long. Um, I was off narcotics in a week. Um, and as I said, like every test has been great. I'm you know right in line, like even intentionally, holding back in PT for the first month, month and a half, like I'm still, you know, above average in terms of recovery time. Um, so I think it's going great. If you have an injury like this, any kind of injury, definitely take responsibility, do some research yourself before going to talk to a doctor. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks for listening guys. Uh, that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions or comments, um, you know, about the surgery, you want to know anything about it, anything about like the, the patient experience or like the surgery itself or, you know, anything more about uh, reconstructions or repairs, definitely hit me up and leave a comment below and thanks for watching.